All right, game three is underway. Uh, a couple draft differences. We've got, we're have we seeing Talia to answer Azir, which is something that we are very, very familiar with. We see another Senelane against another Varus, and I don't know what to tell you. I feel like this game's already decided. I just, I despise Senna as a farmer. We'll see. Maybe they can prove us wrong. There is something very interesting with this team. So you have Belveth paired with two AP. So this is an optimal situation for Belveth. Not only that, but both of them have a lot of pushing power. So you do have the opportunity to try to stack Void Pits. Now, Bel Belveth is going to care a tremendous amount about what's going on in the Void Pit, especially when you talk about the Herald and the Baron. Uh, her ability to actually win games is tied to her ability to take these major objectives later because of the empowered form that she gets right the corals uh the void coral form when she's in that queen mode after she's destroyed one of the other void voidlings uh that's when you get those extra minions and it becomes an impossible wave uh so mad lion's path to victory here is going to be not senna it's going to be Senna and Rel actually evacuating and leaving. Hopefully we get to see one of these rotations where we have Rumble go down bottom, uh, pick up level six with the 530 wave, and either just ult the wave or just push it off the turret, being ready to teleport to uh, mid turret and being able to influence the fight with a rumble ultimate. I want to see Mad Lions basically go for a five five man play for every single void pit spawn right this is what they need to do to win this game now another thing belveth is looking to do is she's looking to uh pick up all those all the stacks right from killing these monsters but stacking up and one of the things that she can do is she can pass through those void mites take a lot less damage from that camp than some other champions do because uh, she can just rip right through them now mickey we see this Senna, Senna rail lane getting, getting to push forward into Nautilus Varus again. But starting at level two, they're going to take this over. Now, because of the top to bottom clear, uh, where the timing is going to be potentially awkward. If they're able to hold this freeze, Viego might be able to get in time for an influence to actually change the scope of this lane uh, and actually just snowball basically out of control because of the strength of the Varus Nautilus right now. If Rel Senna can get this rebound, though, and they can get the wave pushing back to them and kind of running away from the Viego, then they will be in a really good spot. So here they go. They get some of this push out. Nautilus is willing to tank some. Yeah, look at this. This is so perfect. Tanking up the minion wave, saying, no, you do not crash it. If you stick around to harass me, I'm actually just going to keep on moving forward, and we're going to take this engage, uh, and we're going to go hard in right there. Gets the stun, bolt, gets the... Gets the flashback from Rel. That's a major tool that's not going to be at her repertoire. And now, hey, look, we're stronger and the wave's coming back to us. Our Viego's nearby. You basically checkmated already. Viego's going to get his six camp into, into the bot side scuttle. And he's just going to be able to live on this side of the map. He's probably going to take the second spawn of Raptors here as well. Uh, because he's so strong on this side of the map. Azir should be warding left and then hovering right. We'll see whether or not Viego goes into vision to try to take away the Raptors. It looks like they are going to trade the Raptors. This was Viego's prerogative and Belveth's correct answer to get into this spot. Look at that ward. It didn't actually see them around the bend here. Caps might be a little bit miffed about that. Unless we're talking about a spectator bug. Oh, hold on. We see an engage. Hex flash. Yeah, it gets out. Uses flash for hex flash. Very good trade for Mad Lions, but now they completely have nothing to do to stop this lane. Uh, Belveth will come down to this side, so they will threaten a similar situation to what they were just facing, which is, are you going to put enough pressure in our face <clears throat> to actually crash this wave? And if you do, we have a, a jungler nearby to potentially answer. You see how Viego's actually wrapped his way around in the bush. This is something you see in pro at this level, and we expect it to see, I should say is Viego hovering to make sure that they can crash that wave safely and not have to worry with the Belveth, who is nearby. So pretty volatile, action-packed bot lane, uh, to say the least. Top lane, you just have this cannon trying to whittle down the Rumble. Rumble doing a fantastic job staying up in, uh, in CS here. Cannon needs to be very, very careful. This is, this is a matchup that plays out like the Mountain versus the Viper. Uh... You can poke, 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 slash, get as many cuts in, death by a thousand cuts. It's going to be very, very difficult to actually deal completely meaningful, you know, 
lane ending pre uh, pressure damage to the rumble whereas the rumble if you ever overstep let's say you just don't have flash and you put your e on cooldown then rumble will just walk up to you and start toasting you right and there's very little you can do about it so we'll see whether or not that turns into a point of strength for the rumble but for now it'll be prial from top lane for them now here we go the void spawns are up it's actually been six minutes we didn't see that proactive split that i was looking for we also saw senna go back to the bot lane so they did not take they did not opt into pressure option number one they're giving belveth this resource looks like they're going to trade it for dragon the idea being that we're going to try to get three dragons while you get or at least two dragons while you get two sets of voidlings and then we're going to be stronger at every point for the rest of the game with our team fighting from Varus and azir and we're just never going to let you take anything after that and your void grub stacks won't do anything if you can't get to a turret so that is the one thing you have to be careful about if you're if you're playing versus a if you are the scaling composition and yes you'd like to get these void grubs and you say like eventually we're going to get into this team fight i want to be mid i want to be sieging i want the grubs to be spawning and dealing damage to the turrets but if you're the scaling comp and you're playing against a varus in the mid game how do you ever actually make progress on the turret right that's going to be that's going to be their big problem and specifically belveth right belveth can never walk up in this composition the entire game plan needs to be about preserving belveth and giving her a good opportunity to to thrive in this game because what is she going to do as as you're approaching any of these structures outranged by kennen uh viego has all in against you azir outrange Varus can get you nautilus can can um hold you down for the viego right and you have chain cc if the Belveth gets chain CC'd, right, there, there is no surviving. And if she's not alive with her Void Coral doing well, then what is she doing, right? What's the purpose for her on this team? So we'll see how that plays out. Seeing Kennen getting some more Whittle damage here. Last chance, you see how he backs off. As soon as he hits the stun, he knows he gets one more auto, and then you basically have to play very, very cautiously, patiently here. Do not want to get all in. Varus and Nautilus playing with a level 6 spike on Varus means that they can freeze this wave forever and say, are you ever coming down to us? And this is what I'd like to see. This is the perfect opportunity for Senna to evacuate, right? Get her out of this situation that is nothing short of awful and put rumble down here let rumble just ult this next wave away and saying okay like are, are you willing to just do this i will ult every other wave and just and ju just force you to turn your freeze into a perma stuck stuck bottom varus Right, and then you can put Senna on the map and say, "All right, maybe we can make a play with Rel plus Belveth. Try to get onto Kennen, maybe collapse on Nazir, uh, maybe invade into Viego's northern quadrant. Right, see if we can make something proactive. If they ever get control of this northern quadrant, by the way, that's going to spell trouble for Kennen. Uh, Kennen doesn't want to be in any position where he can ever be wrapped on because of the threat of of the champions that are coming forward. It won't, wouldn't be Rumble in that case." But right now, with the Rumble Top, you're going to make sure that you're always marking the Belveth in the spot. Hold on, she's going for an all-in. Taking her lead over the, Vie the Viego right now. She's very strong in these early skirmishes, level 1 especially, right, with the 4 stacks of the Q. You've got Conqueror, very easy to stack up. Uh, once Viego gets the full item, which uh, presumably is going to be Kraken Slayer, it helps with the clear speed and with the combating. Um, but once we see the Kraken Slayer, that's when Viego will be much more comfortable to try to take these fights. Right now we have a three camp diff, Belveth to Viego. So Belveth getting a little bit done in that way. They also have the kill on Azir. So the middle of the map looking okay for Mad Lions. Uh, it's it's going to be miserable for the Senna though. And, and coming out of last game where the Senna just felt unplayable and Supa had this like tilted approach to the game, I'm not sure that I wouldn't have gone for something much more supportive from that role, uh, something like an Ash or a Jin, something I can contribute from a long distance away so that you can allow them to play further back, give them a game where they have a simpler identity and role uh, compared to this Senna, which, you know, I know what they're saying. They're, 
They're going for OP on patch. They want opportunity. Rectrix is the silent all-star. I uh, haven't heard nearly a much, uh, as much commotion about it as I thought we would have. Uh, it's, it's the capacity to give multiple speed items and AD to, to your weakest member. That's exactly what they want. They want to keep the range. They want to be able to deal damage in a short chunk and then get away. Hold on, Talia flexing on Viego, Yike actually taking a bad death, and look at all this, all the spawns right here, this is why Senna needs to rotate over to this camp. Uh, the other bonus of getting Senna there is look at how many things die. And I'm surprised that they don't code it out. I don't know, maybe they're not, maybe they want Senna to be popular. But all of those Void Mites, right? Just like, just like Malzahar's vo Void Links can spawn souls. And you can collect them and and jumpstart your way into your mid game spikes in those spots. All right, ooh, there we go. Has gone red mode, trying to push. That's actually a very weak push by Merwin. This is nothing but a mistake. Uh, you need to be able to one shot that entire wave. And it looks like he's can use the ultimate. Try to draw the wave over just a little bit. It doesn't kill the cannon, no, it does. So he does get a little something back for it. Um, the ult wasn't perfect for that. They're going to try to give this kill over to one of these carries. Varus takes it. Merwin bites the dust. They don't take, they don't lose that much because he did get the ultimate here, but it's not a cannon wave. So it will be very easy to Varus, for Varus to push this in, which means that he's going to get both of these plates. Now, what do they get done on the other side of the map? They have moved Senna away from Varus. That's exactly what they want for this situation. Trade plates. Ideal. Especially when you have Void Grubs, you're dealing more damage to the turret than the Varus is. Trade Dragon, totally fine. This is six six stacks, right? I don't see it on the on the replay, but I do believe they have all six stacks here, right? No, there must be five, because only one only one thing spawned. Alright, so good good job by G2 to steal the one, however they did get it. I didn't actually see it live, but you see the difference in the pushing pressure, not having that one extra, I mean, realistically, several extra Void Grubs for the push is a big deal. All right, Mickey taking an aggressive position right here. Needs to start getting some vision down. Uh, does get seen, moves around, does escape from the Senna W, which means uh, we're going to see all the resources being blown out. Does use the flash, and this is the Mickey diff, right? We talk about which situations he can and can't get away from. This spot, with a turret that's bleeding down, with the enemy team coming up trying to get it down, gets punished a little bit moving forward. You don't have enough of a way out, right? You have your flash, but ends up just flashing in a straight line. It means that he gets into trouble. Hold on, massive bait here. Uh, they're looking to trade. Even if they traded, they'd be happy with this. But the fact that Viego gets sent a soul right here, this is so bad for Supa. And the bad beats keep on rolling. He, he had an okay spot. We thought we were in a comfortable spot. They rotated him away from Varus, but ends up trying to take that play against the Kennen. Things like, oh, here's my time to get back in it. I can show him how good I am. Ends up walking in to Fog of War way past your normal pushing. Like, under no circumstances should you ever think that you should be pushing past or in range of this to, of this bush unless you see all four members of the enemy team somewhere else. All right, that said, Belveth is very strong. We see the early Kraken Slayer does an insane burst in her damage for clearing. She's going to get this. Now that she's got the Void Corals. And they should move this into, into lanes. Basically, Belveth, once she has this buff, you should stop taking camps. You should start moving into lanes. Try to get as much structural damage during the buff as you can. Not only are you uh, creating the extra Remora for the push, but you are also spiked with that Queen Bee form. They find another kill. That's going to be a reset. Extra duration. They're in lane already. Look at all the spawns coming. Now look at this. What they should be doing, all five members should be coming here. Merwin, where are you? You should 100% be coming over. And if you're G2, you should be willing to give your inhibitor here to take uh, structures on the other side in answer. Look at this army as it's approaching. Spawn after spawn after spawn after spawn. They come in. Multiple Voidlings coming up. Now they do go for the flank. Merwin's a little bit late coming in, but he is here in time. Talia's just going to wall them off. Beautifully done. 
This is beautiful macro by M, uh, by MDK. You do end up getting the engage. They're feeling strong for the rest of this. I don't know where G2's aggression is coming from. I don't think they're actually strong here. The only way they can be strong is if they get uh, resets onto uh, Viego, and he just is the single biggest carry in the entire game. And they say, yeah, we can get one more kill, and as long as we're getting kills and, and Yike is healthy on this champion, we can continue to win these fights. Basically, getting to borrow the cooldowns and abilities, the items of all the other champions as they carry on. I'm not sure if this is madness or just truly heads up here. Cap's trying to scoop back. There's no passive in play, so just dies for free here. Hansam is on the wrong side of the wall. Uh, good positioning. And was she actually stunned? Was that a, a cleanse? Was that a cleanse for nothing? They chain the kills. They're up in numbers. 3-3. Three, three. They end up with positive for the rest of the trade. Yeah, they're good. Uh, I would have much rathered, much, much, much rathered rumble being in position here rather than just teleporting in teleporting you are much later for the play when it's time uh and you're forcing you're you're playing under the other team's load and we see again g2 putting more pressure on them adding to the mental stack saying no we're the ones engaging here are the conditions uh, i'd like to think that their communications are very clear in these spots and that they are just taking it to a less experienced team and forcing them to make mistakes in the big fights, which is absolutely a great calm to take, a great uh, line to take against an inexperienced roster. Now the Remora continue, they get this tier two. I'd like to see them move over and get this bot outer though. They need to do this to open up the map. Uh, it is also a third dragon for G2, which is not the most important. Uh, you should not be willing to lose the game here in any way, shape, or form. Teleport is available from Kennen, so the non-fight plan is actually going to favor them. If there's a long stasis here, they can get a lot of damage done. So G2, look for them to try to posture in a position that allows them to stall this for as long as possible. You see Broken Blade actually using the Bloom, shows off that he's there. He also teleported to a control ward, so they do know that he's there. They're trying to take position on him. This Chemtech map is super dangerous for any kind of cannon lineup. They're actually trying to take everything onto Merwin. They're saying, well, let's use the ultimate right here. Senna is not enough. They don't actually consolidate the kill here, which is a huge problem. This means Viego's can't take over the fight. They tried to get too much. They bit off more than they can chew, and Viego's going to take over this fight. Why, yes, I would like to ride that pony. You can see it. Look at the, the looks on the faces. If you look at the player cams here, it's like, I don't want to say dejected, but perplexed. Perplexed. How, you know, what did we do wrong? I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Something's wrong. I just can't quite figure it out. It looks perplexed. G2 saying, you know, come over to our side. If you want to encroach, you want to come this far over, that's fine. Come into our territory where we have multiple control wards. You have to try to drop a ward in that bush in the fight as it's going. And, uh, and we're going to force you to try to give one pick, right? This entire composition is designed around Viego everything's around viego getting resets you cannot be willing to just try to isolate your fight especially if you're rumble it matters so much that this fight happens in a small area for talia's aoe belveth aoe for senna be able to rip through aoe right you're an aoe comp you don't want to be separating this fight into two separate areas because that's not how your team works now you are playing against the aoe from the other team right they have plenty of aoe damage short of viego Kennen, Azir, Varus, it's all based on trying to get someone low enough for Viego to get that first reset, right? And then trying to take over, get those extra cooldowns. But now G2 is finally in the lead. Uh, and Belveth, is she going to be able to look at this Void Pit? It looks like they spent a little bit too much trying to get for a Dragon that they did not need to do. Uh, two different times that Rumble was not in the best position for these fights. Again, showing a little bit of inexperience. see what g2 does to try to consolidate all right shallow ward line on the northern quadrant there is one ward placed behind them that they didn't catch 
They're going to start moving up. Varus is going to feel very strong here, so they're going to start moving up. Rumble looking to take a wave and then move on over. But you see that the, the fact that they didn't get that bot lane outer turret means that any push that they create down there is just going to get rebounded back out. And, and because they didn't get that while they had the Remora, right, that should have been an objective. That would have opened up many flanking positions uh, for their team to try to hold into an area, right, and try to kind of bulldoze their way in. Curious what made Caps come back here. Nice little ultimate from Rumble, saying if you guys want to come through here, you're going to take a lot of damage. Belveth able to get that set. She's empowered now, super dangerous. Cap's not having his best Azir games, huh? All right, how do they set up? Caps is going to respawn. They'd like to see them move inside out, right? Try to play for Pryo through mid. Definitely try to get this outer middle turret down. That thing is a thorn in your side. It is stopping all your progress as G2. The good news is if you can target this top and middle outer and get those down, then you can open up the map for yourself. Try to find better angles, especially for the cannon. But as long as that inner, uh, sorry, that mid lane outer turret is available, it's going to shut off many of the avenues of attack uh, for a cannon that's looking to get that big teleport. You can't even safely get a, a ward out into one of those spots. So you notice that they haven't gotten a single ward onto the enemy beach, right? Nothing's there. Everything's playing on their side of the map, trying to give up the minimum, saying, all right, we're going to play for team fights and flanks later. Uh, try to nullify this Belveth by forcing her into big team fights where she might just get caught up in the aftermath of all the splash damage. I right, see big engage to start off. Mickey X willing to in as always for his team. I'm willing to take 70, 80, 100% of my health just to get these guys fairly low. Uh, if they reach for me, then my team can get a reset. But Rumble comes in full strength. He's empowered right now, uh, or Enrage overheated, if you will. Yike gets reset number one. If he can get Rumble, that's huge. Okay, he got the Rumble. This fight's going to be theirs now. Actually misses the E. Doesn't predict right there. All right. And you see the difference in the dueling. Everything in this game revolves around Viego getting kills. You cannot expand this fight and mad lions every this is happening all of their losses have been i don't want to call it ego driven but it's ego driven i can get this kill as opposed to should i get this kill and it's not calculated it's it's always derived from oh i'm in a good spot i can go progress w whereas what does my team want and in every case here you never want your team to to get a single death because that single death is going to turn into resets for Viego. Uh, it's absolutely turning into a big power spike. And now it looks like they're trying to come here and answer this dragon. They should just be giving this. Maybe, maybe you can go forward while you're daring Viego to uh, recall. But Viego says, no, I'm healthy enough. New jungle, OP, I'm perma, perma full health. And uh, I'm just going to get this for myself. Then we'll take the recall, shop. He's probably got a tremendous amount of gold. It's got to be like 2,500 gold in his inventory. We'll see what he comes out with. Used to be that you'd see stopwatch here, but... Now what, what will it be? No, he ends up stopping recall to come over. All right, good play by, by Mad Lions saying, let's force the issue. We know that Yike has not taken his recall yet because he's on this dragon. Let's see if we can press up, but you need to commit. This needs to be a full commit. We need everything for this Baron because we need Belveth to get the spawn. She does get it. Now, can they get out alive? Viego does not have all of his money. Now, Azir does find a good scoop. That means that Viego gets shut down number one. Senna dead again. Super having a, a series that they want to forget and they should forget, right? Just erase it from your mind. It never happened. Don't. If you're a coach, don't even review these games with Supa. Just review the mindset right? You don't need to go into this game because this everything that's in this game, this is not the player that you have, right? This is not what they are. So any feedback you give them can kind of go in one ear and out the other because they're going to think about the tilt and why they were making these mistakes as opposed to growing, growing and talking about what are we looking for next time? Just keep the focus forward. Belveth 
deep breath for your carry and probably give them a champion that they can be more supportive on, frankly. Give them an easier role, but no stress of scaling, no stress of, of carrying a fight. Give them Ash in the next game. Let's see how this plays out. Again, Mickey willing to take up damage for his team. New unflinching Aftershock, right? Uh, he was willing to do this last season, but it's even better now. They end up getting the, the kill on Belveth, which means she's got no Void Corals. It also means that Viego's getting a tremendous amount of, of extra mobility. But with all that said, game's still relatively even. They're finally going to take down this uh, bot lane turret. I guess they took it before, but they're finally going to put some presence here. They do have a couple of preserved Baron buffs. Uh, I don't like the choice to go for this turret as opposed to top. The dragon's not spawning for 2 minutes 45 seconds. So getting this side, it's actually just wrong to take bottom relative to top here. Now, they may be saying that there's residual vision uh, left from G2's contest, but Mad Lions was there first, so they had better first wards out. They also can have mid lane prio. They also have the Baron. You should be trying to take this top lane inner, erase that so you have the longest lane possible, so then later when it's time to contest this Dragon for Soul, if you even choose to do it, which you don't need to, you can let them give Soul, especially if it means getting breaking another base structure. Instead, you're going to the spot that's in the favorable position for them, where they want to be anyways to help themselves contest this area. You want to force them to the top side of the map, and once they're up top, then you can try to spread the fight out again, move it back out, uh, and then consolidate under your own terms. Instead, we just get another Senna death. Not to say that this wouldn't happen necessarily on the other side of the map, but a little bit harder to create those flanks with that huge notch uh, that is in the new map on top side. A little bit easier to siege on that side. It, it's much harder for someone to wrap around you because they have to go so far around to get to you. And you can work your way into this into this area, try to control this line of vision, get a ward up here after you push mid. So the different steps would be push mid with four, one person bring up the slow push, come together, move your vision into the northern quadrant, push mid again, use that prior to slide over into the top with the protection of all the wards in the northern quadrant. But instead they go for this here, it means that they're giving the maximum. Yike actually stepping forward even before Broken Blade is in range. Uh, saying like, nope, I can get this. I don't need any more help to go forward. We've got the Senna. Scowie trying to turn around to get any amount of spells back. Azir with the teleport, forcing the issue. I love that ward uh, that they stuck well in behind them. Allows them to get this flank angle. And they destroy this fight. All right, now, now we're getting in. So we saw face uh visual reactions the visage changing before and you saw the exacerbated you know perplexed look now we're actually starting to get into the shaking mode where you start seeing them with their stresses taking over this is something we could have told you was coming and they needed to try to preempt the solution for uh, but instead now they're dealing with this carry that's not going to be playing themselves they do get one kill right here off of the failed scoop they flash over the wall is Viego going to be able to get anything? El Yoya doing everything to stay alive as long as possible, but that is it. He is dead. This game that is revolving around Belveth and Viego is constantly going in favor of the Viego in large part because Senna is spending so much time early dead. Look at that attack face. <laughs> it finally hit. Funny, it's going at the same speed. So again, if if we're a coach in this situation, you have you have to prioritize mental over strategy, right? Your team can go back to the thing that it knows how to do as long as they're confident, right? If they're doing it under the stress and duress of, of too much pressure and heightened cortisol levels, then they're going to do it because they have to, not because they choose to. And when you are taking actions because you believe you have to, then you are your risk assessment uh, or, or your evaluation after you fail gets significantly worse, right? You end up taking that further plummet down because the thing that you had to do failed, and then you're like, Shh, I failed at the thing that I had to get right. I And then you start thinking I'm worthless or I'm not good enough, right? When it's failing at the thing that you choose to do, that's okay, you can still make adjustments, 
right? But if they're still thinking about what they have to do and they're making stress plays, then you are basically opening the door for very high failure quotients where the, where the cost of failing is just too, too high. All right, they try to rotate over onto caps. I like this play. Moving over, they've got some amount of vision, but G2 has the superior vision on this side of the map. Mickey with the mastering of the lollipops here. And Frasca is going to be first to go down, which means we're going to get more vehicle resets. And the rumble all is really nicely placed, but caps flying over here trying to get to the back line. Merwin can't really do much. Rumble is a useless champion when you're running away. You have to be going into the fight. And this time, Supa is like, just don't die. Okay, well, also just don't contribute. And uh, G2 takes this one. I am predicting that this is going to be done next game, just with the way that this play is going and the way that we're seeing the mannerisms. Like, you can see it right there from Alvaro, just licking his chops. Like, I don't know. Like, it almost seems like he's pissed at a teammate. Like, something something is very, very wrong uh, with their teams. And uh, Elioya sagging in his seat, right? All of these things are indicators of a team that is very stressed, Right, they should be loose, even in a loss. Like, find a way to think about what's the next, what's the next right thing. All right, if you're G two. They'd like, the, they'd like to be able to play for Elder. Uh, they want to make sure, obviously, that Baron doesn't go down. If you're, if you're Mad Lions, you try to stall and defend on the inside of this dragon, and then you move over towards the Baron, and you try to trade the Elder for the Baron. Right? You're in an you're in awful situation. You don't want to create these fights. You're, you're too far behind. Senna was not allowed to scale. Uh, what are we, this, do we have a scale counter? 81 stacks. You'd like to be at 100 right now. So this is a full tier down for where Senna would like to be. Could be at 120 in some situations. This late in the game, I've even seen 140. Azir's going to just force the issue, scoop up this fight. And, uh, and Mad Lions trying to defend. Get nothing. You can't defend versus a losing situation. You can balk. You, you can feign. You can fake like you're going to defend, and you can throw jabs, but you cannot actually line up for a straight fight against the team that's going to crush you. So they really just kind of shut down. This is what we're talking about. Lines of play get very linear, very predictable, very exploitable. When you start doing the stress-induced safe play, let me just do the thing that is kind of basic. Uh, and right now, like you needed to trade something. You need to try to go press, press forward somewhere. We'll see if they can rebound. I highly, uh, highly doubt it for this fourth game. But uh, yeah, right now, Senadif, 0-3 so far.